Hello everyone. In the video today, we're going to try to finish lecture eight about the discrete choice modeling. Uh, the video will focus on the estimation of coefficients applied for the multinomial logic model. First, let's recall the multinomial logic model that we learned in the previous class. And the formula here describes the um, probability that we're going to choose model I from the set of CN. We have several assumptions for this equation. First, all the individuals are utility maximizer. We are trying to maximize the utility we're going to choose for the mode. Second, the utility can be specified by the sum of the deterministic component and the random component. And third, the random component follows in the IID gamma distribution and uh, the gamma distribution is a uh, standard gamma distribution with the parameter of 0 and 1. Uh, finally, uh, this is not a mandatory condition, but usually the determinist component is uh, uh, linear in the parameter. So Vjn is a function of the observed variables xj and a set of the coefficient theta. Uh, we have several issues to be solved. Um, first, we want to find out the way to estimate the parameters theta m based on the uh, values of the variable that we can observe. From the uh, probability of the multinomial logic model, we can see that the deterministic utility cannot be observed. Uh, in the probability expression, we also cannot observe the probability for us to choose the mode i. What we can observe is uh, the outcome, whether the mode is choose or not, that is 0 or 1. Uh, the second issue we're going to uh, solve is the aggregation. We want to define the elasticity of equivalence. And third, we're going to find out the uh, independence from the irrelevant alternatives properties. And first, we want to extend this model to a uh, choice combination, which means we're going to try to understand the nested structures. Uh, in this lecture, we'll focus on the estimation of the parameter theta n. Before MNL estimation, we will have a quick review about the estimation problem. Uh, this is the general formula for the uh, equation that we can apply for the parameter estimation. Uh, we can also rewrite this equation to a random uh, format. Here, y is a dependent variable that we can observe. X is the vector independent variable which can also be observed from the sample. And theta is the vector of the parameters that we want to uh, estimate, and usually they are known. And psi is the vector of disturbance, and that will be the random term applied in the model. Uh, usually, uh, we know uh, the formula f psi with certainty. Uh, it contains some random variables inside. Uh, second, the parameters are totally unknown, and we want to estimate their values. And third, we will have an assumption about the distribution of the random terms psi in this formula. Uh, our goal is trying to complete the model estimation to find out the values of theta. Uh, in summary, uh, we will have y as a random variable, which has a combination of deterministic component and the random component. And x is a vector of known variables and could be observed but it will influence the distribution of y. That is, y is determined by a function of x and theta. In general, the model we are trying to estimate is applied to describe the population with a huge amount of individuals. However, as we know that the population has a large number of individuals, it's impossible for us to know the property of each one. So to get the estimation, 
what we can do is like we were doing a survey and pick up a small number of individuals as an example and observe the independent and dependent variables for each individual. And then we can use some statistical method to estimate the population parameters as the theta hat with this uh, n observations in the sample. Um, and theta n is just one estimate of the true parameters in the population. For example, if we are considering linear regression, then g would be in the function for the least square operator. Uh, also, the realization of the estimated parameter theta hat is in a random variable before we actually get the sample. And uh, this one is applied to estimate the true values. And we should say that these true values is deterministic for the population. Now let's go back to the discrete choice problem. First, we assume that there will be a set of uh, choices available for individual n, and for each choice, it has one utility. For example, for the choice i, the utility is uin. And y would be the observed choice for the individual n. Uh, if the choice i is uh, selected, then we can claim that the choice i has the highest utility. Uh, usually, uh, we are considering the probability for the individual n to choose the mode i. It could be represented as the function here. And for the utility, it contains two components, deterministic component v and the random component psi. Of considering all the individuals are in the same population, and the population will have this are uh, deterministic uh, parameters, then we can assume that all the theta n are the constant coefficients in the model. So we replace it with theta. That is uh, the probability of choosing mode i will be in the function of x and the parameter theta. For the MLL, MNL model, we will have that the probability of choosing the choice i is exponential of vi over the summation of the exponential vj. Uh, here we say that vj is the deterministic utility. Usually it's in a function of theta and x, but we assume that uh, the deterministic utility can be represented by a linear equation. Uh, with this assumption, we can rewrite the um, probability function in this formula, at the same time, uh, vj would be a vector of the parameter theta times the independent variable x. And uh, this will be the linear format for the deterministic uh, component. In this class, the maximum likelihood estimation is applied to conduct the MNL estimation. First, let's consider the sample with uh, n observations. It contains the independent variable x and dependent variable y. And we know that y is the uh, selected choices. If the alternative i is chosen, then yi is 1. If it's not, that will be 0. Then uh, we can see that there will be only one value for the y vector for each individual, and the summation of all the cells in the y vector would be 1. Uh, also, for this sample, we will have n observations, which means it contains n selections from n individuals. And then we can find out the joint distribution for uh, y1, y2 until we go to yn with the condition of x1, x2 until we get xn. So um, it's also uh, straightforward for us to assume that each observation is independent in the sample. Then this uh, joint distribution can be 
represented as the distribution of each individual and that would be uh, fy1 given x1 times fy2 given x2 and here we go to fyn given xn and uh, this is just called the likelihood function The likelihood function can also be simplified with the uh, product operation. And the maximum likelihood estimation method we are trying to find out a set of parameters to estimate the deterministic uh, parameter theta. And uh, those parameters will ensure that the observed sample is most likely to be occurred in the population. In that sense, we can have the optimization problem as shown in this equation. Uh, we know that the product operation is really hard for us to solve the optimization problem. Then we can introduce the log transformation for the likelihood function. And with that sense, we will have the uh, maximum log likelihood function as shown in this equation. And with this one, the product operation will be modified to the summation operation. In order to solve this optimization problem, we will recall the first order partial differentiation for the log likelihood function, and it will be applied for all the p plus 1 parameters theta. Um, to ensure that the uh, optimization problem can give us the actual optimal values, we have to uh, make sure that the formula satisfies the second order condition, which means the Hessian matrix must be negative semi definite. That means all the eigenvalues should be negative. Now let's see how we can apply the maximum likelihood estimation method for the multinomial logic model. This is the uh, likelihood function. It's the product of the probability for each individual n. And with the uh, MNL model, we can find out the probability of choosing the mode i for the individual n. Uh, it would be a function of the deterministic uh, utility. And then the probability of yn given xn could be uh, rewritten as the product of uh, i for all the uh, modes. Um, and that will be the probability of i given cn power to yin. As we know that uh, for the uh, selection of each individual, if the mode i is um, Chosen, then the value is 1. If it's not, then it's 0. And for this whole formula, we can extend it as the equation here. And that will be the same to the probability of i given cn. And uh, then we can further expand the likelihood function in this formula. And uh, this would be uh, applied for the MNL model. As we specified previously, uh, the log transformation will be applied for the likelihood function. And this would be steps for us to find out the log likelihood function. Uh, first, we apply the log operation for this uh, function and all the product operations will become the summation and then we can further simplify the uh, probability power to yin and it will become yin times the log evin minus the log summation of evjn uh, this formula can be further simplified the component here will become vin and now give us the formula for the log likelihood function.
Then we can further expand the log likelihood as the function of set of variables theta. Uh, from our previous assumption, the deterministic utility vj is a linear function of theta and the independent variable x. Uh, with this assumption, we can expand the log likelihood function and uh, replacing the vj and vi with the linear function we will have the uh, log likelihood as the function of theta 0, theta 1, and here theta p. Uh, then we can use the uh, first order partial differentiate to find out the optimal value of theta case to maximize the log likelihood for the uh, multinomial logic model. Now let's see how we can find out the first order partial differentiation for this optimization problem. Uh, we will try to get the uh, value for partial L over partial theta k. And uh, it could be expanded into two components in the second uh, equation. Uh, for the first component, it will be very easy for us to find out the uh, expression. Uh, if the index of theta is different, then the partial operation will give you the value of zero. If they are the same, then there will be one. So for the uh, first component, the value is uh, xkin. For the second part, it's a little bit complicated, but uh, after we do the uh, simplification, we can find that the uh, expression will be uh, very straightforward. Um, it will give us the result as the summation of xkj times exponential of theta times xj over the summation of exponential of theta times xj. So that will be the uh, expression for the second component, and uh, this will be the expression for the first one. And uh, then we will have the simplified first order partial differentiation with respect to theta k for the uh, multinomial logic model. At the optimal solution of theta, we are able to find that the first order partial differentiation is zero. Uh, then we will have this equation. And in this equation, the component here uh, for the index j is not related to any other indexes in the equation. So uh, there will be no difference for us to change j to l. And uh, then you will find that uh, the components in the equation is just the probability of choosing the alternative j. And that will give us a simplified equation for the uh, coefficient theta k. And we see that k varies from 0 to p, which means we will have p plus 1 equations. In the uh, model estimation, there are p plus 1 and no variables, theta 0, theta 1, till theta p. And with the p plus 1 equations we have here, we are able to find out the optimal values of the p plus 1 and no variables. Uh, the p plus 1 equation can be rewritten into a uh, vector format, capital F theta equal to 0. Here, F theta is a uh, p plus 1 vector, and uh, each element in the vector represents one equation with respect to one parameter. Uh, we can see that F theta is very complicated and it's almost impossible for us to find out the analytical solution to the equation. So instead of the analytical solution, we are trying to use uh, some heuristic method to get out the uh, optimal values of theta. So one popular method is called the newton raphson algorithm, and it's based on the recursive Taylor series expansion of the equation. And uh, this formula shows the Taylor series expansion of one uh, function fx is expanded at the point x0. So fx equals to fx0 plus x minus x0 times df over dx at the location of x0. 
uh, plus half x minus x0 square times d square f over dx square and so on. For our case, we can apply Taylor series expansion for the vectors. So we will have capital F theta equal to F theta at the optimum value theta m plus lambda F theta at theta m times theta minus theta m plus the other smaller terms. And here lambda F theta represent the gradients of the um, vector f theta. Uh, also from the optimization problem we want f theta equal to zero and uh, this means we will have um, the expansion equals to zero. Uh, then we can derive that lambda f theta times theta minus theta m is approximately equal to minus f theta at theta m. And then we can further solve this equation and it will give us the result as theta minus theta m equal to minus uh, lambda f theta inverse times f theta. Uh, it will also give us the value as uh, the true value theta is approximately of theta m minus um, lambda f theta inverse times f theta. And this would be the equation for us to uh, apply the heuristic method to get the true value of theta. So here's a step for us to apply the newton raphson algorithm to find out the optimal values of theta. First, we'll set the initial guess of theta. Uh, for all the p plus 1 parameters, the initial value can be set as 0. And then we will calculate the refinement to the initial guess using the recursive formula. Uh, that is uh, theta m, that will be the uh, the parameter we're going to estimate for the next iteration equals to theta m minus lambda f theta m inverse times f theta m. And here you need to find out lambda f theta m, which is the most difficult part for this uh, uh, iteration. And uh, uh, you will continue the uh, second step, and here you find out that the uh, Differences between theta m plus 1 and theta m is uh, small enough, which means the uh, parameters are converged in the iteration. Then you can stop the uh, iteration and then you will have the uh, estimation for the parameters. Uh, in this estimation, the most difficult part is the uh, gradients of f theta. So in the next page, we will show how to find out the uh, elements in this matrix. And it's a partial FL over partial theta K. From our previous analysis, we have the expression of FL theta. And then it's easy to write down partial FL over partial theta K. In this equation, um, we just need to find out the expression of partial probability J over partial theta K. Uh, with the MNL model, we can define the uh, probability of choosing mode J as the formula here. And then we can apply the knowledge of calculus to find out the uh, partial differentiation. Uh, the expression can be further expanded in the uh, second formula. And uh, this formula can be further simplified. We can see that on the top. Um, for this term, it will become xkj times exponential of theta xkj. And for the second term, it will become xkq times exponential of theta times xq. And uh, now we can do a slightly modification about the index at the bottom. And, uh, reformat the whole 
expression in this equation you will find that the first term is just the probability of choosing mode j and similarly for the second one and for the third term here is the probability of choosing mode q then we can simplify this equation as the xkj times the probability of j minus probability of j times the summation of xkq times the probability of q and we can take the probability of j outside the brackets um, this one will give us the simplified uh, result for the pressure fl over pressure theta k um, also you will find that uh, the index i is not related to any index in this summations so we can take the summation of yin outside uh, another thing you should uh, recall that for the same individual n the summation of all uh, modes for yi the result will be 1 then we can discard this term and this will give us the uh, final expression for partial FL over partial theta K. For now, we have complete analysis of the MNL estimation. And then we will see one example about using the method to estimate the parameter values. In this example, we assume that there are totally 21 individuals and we observe their choices and uh, the attributes. Assume that for each individual, they are able to take either car or bus to arrive at their destination. And we are also able to observe the travel time for each one to take car and bus. Uh, the table shows the detailed our values about the travel time by these two modes. Then we can apply the uh, MNR model to determine the probability of taking the alternative J. Uh, in addition, we need to specify the uh, coefficients. Uh, here we only have one attribute, so we need to specify two coefficients, theta 0 and theta 1, and uh, define the uh, x vector for car and bus for car it's zero and the travel time of car and for bus it's one and the travel time of bus here we should note that the for the first term of the x vector uh, there should be uh, at least one of the alternative um, to set the value as zero and for the others uh, but not all of them will be 1. The reason for this set is like we want to make sure that we are able to identify the differences of different transporting mode even though they have the same travel time. In this example, for example, if the travel time of car and bus are the same, uh, we still want to identify the differences of the mode with car and bus for each individual. Then with the deterministic term, uh, for caused by the uh, first uh, element x0i, we are able to get uh, different utilities for car and bus. Um, from our previous definition, we said that the deterministic utility of car and bus are linear functions of their attributes, so that is uh, theta times x. Uh, then we can write down the expression of the probability taking car and bus uh, which would be the probability of 1 and 2 in this example uh, we can further expand the expression into the uh, linear format of the attributes In the model estimation, we have to find out the vector of capital F theta. And from our previous analysis, we can get a general expression of FL theta. Uh, in this specific example, 
there are only two parameters to calibrate, then the size of F theta is two. And uh, considering the two mode, bus and car, applied in this example, this uh, vector can be further expand for the two modes and the two different uh, probabilities. Then we can apply the probability of the two driving mode, car and bus, and apply them in the F theta vector. And this will be the full expression about a vector capital F theta with respect to the uh, parameter theta 0 and theta 1. The next thing we will do is trying to find out the gradient of capital F theta and apply the gradient for the newton raphson algorithm. In this example, there are two parameters to estimate theta 0 and theta 1. Then the size of lambda F theta is 2 by 2. And this formula shows the general expression of each element in the gradient matrix. Uh, for this example, we are considering two modes, car and bars. Then we can further expand the uh, general expression for this uh, specific example, as we show in the formula here. Then we can find out expression of each element in the gradient matrix. And this one shows the uh, formula for partial F0 over partial theta 0. And uh, similarly, we can get a partial F0 over partial theta 1. Partial F1 over partial theta 0. And then finally, we have partial F1 over partial theta 1. Summarizing all the results, we will get a matrix for lambda F theta. Also, previously we already derived capital F theta for theta 0 and theta 1. Finally, we can apply the equation here to update theta values with um, lambda F theta and F theta that we derived previously. Uh, remember that you have to apply enough number of iterations to make sure that theta is converged. And the converged theta value would be the estimate of the parameters in the uh, population based on the MNL model.